What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Is Justin Turner done in Los Angeles? Will LA bring him back? Who will be the Dodgers' third baseman next season? We're going to dive into that in just a second. But quick reminder for all latest Dodgers news and rumors all off season long, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. And if you really want to support the channel, you want to see us drop even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And as always, I want your takes down below in the comment section. Today's Dodgers Nation question of the day. Do you want to see the Dodgers pick up Justin Turner's $16 million club option? Has a $2 million buyout. Do you want to see him back in L.A. next season on a different deal? Let us know down below. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So Justin Turner has been a great Dodger. He's been a stalwart for this organization. He has been the unofficial team captain since he stepped onto the scene and just turned his entire career around. He reinvented himself in L.A. after the Mets gave up on him. He became a multi-time all-star. He had one of the most indelible moments in Dodgers history with his Game 2 walk-off in the 2017 NLCS. It was the first walk-off home run in the postseason that the Dodgers had since Kirk Gibson in 1988. Make no mistake about it. Justin Turner is a big part of Dodger lore. If you look at his counting stats, he leads the Dodgers in so many different categories in the postseason, but you don't pay players for what they've done. You pay them for what you expect them to do in the future. And the big question today is, will the Dodgers bring back JT? Well, I asked you guys over on Twitter, should the Dodgers pick up Justin Turner's $16 million club option and 29.3% of you said no, while 70.7% of you said yes. And that was with 9,634 votes. So that's not a small sample size. That is a lot of votes. And the majority of Dodger fans are saying, no, do not pick up that $16 million club option that has a $2 million buyout attached to it. Now, the first thing I want to point out is I did run this poll shortly after the Dodgers lost to the Padres in the NLDS. And yes, it was the worst postseason collapse in Dodgers franchise history. So you did have a lot of emotional Dodger fans out there. Look, I'm pretty sure if I ran a poll that asked, are you ever going to have a Dodger dog again? And the majority of people would have said no. Are you going to watch the Dodgers again? A lot of people might have said no, because there were a lot of heartbroken Dodger fans after that loss of the Padres. So if I had ran the poll maybe this week, a little later in the week, I think you probably would have seen some more yeses and less noes. But still, that is a pretty large amount of Dodger fans that don't think that LA should pick up that $16 million club option. But let's walk through this and let's take a look at Justin Turner's season in 2022. So if you remember in 2021, the big story with JT was his hot start, was the fact that he was hitting for so much power so early on in the season. You had the nacho bomb and really in the course of his career, he's the guy that starts to heat up from a power standpoint when the weather starts to heat up. But last season, he came out the gates fast, not the case in 2022. Now the first First 84 games of the season, JT slash 256, 331, 403, had a 734 OPS, hit eight home runs, 21 doubles, had 51 RBI. And then after the All-Star break, and really before that, after Joe Musgrove said that he wasn't a threat and he had that two home run game, he really started to come alive. Last 44 games of the season, he slashed 319, 386, 503, had an 889 OPS with five home runs and 50 doubles and the truth about JT is he had a massive turnaround in 2022 after having such a terrible start he was one of the best and most consistent hitters in Major League Baseball down the stretch in April and March he hit 197 May he hit 240 June he hit 236 then July he hit 400 with an OPS over a thousand August he hit 314 with an 815 OPS and then September and October he hit 322 with a 946 OPS. So he did finish strong. So you were hoping for a good postseason, but that just wasn't the case. In October against the San Diego Padres in the NLDS, he goes two for 13, had three strikeouts, no extra base hits, hit 154, had an OPS of 467, and he just couldn't come through with runners in scoring position. He goes 0 for 5 with three strikeouts and a walk with runners in scoring position. And sadly, and I hate to say this, but Justin Turner was not a threat with runners on base during the Padres series. He struggled. He just looked overmatched against high-velocity fastballs. You saw 
lazy outs. And the one that really comes to mind is game two. Bottom of the sixth inning, the Dodgers down four to three. And what happens? You got runners on the corners, no outs, Justin Turner at the plate. And on the 0-2 count, the umpire gives him a break. It's a strike clearly on the outside corner. The ump calls it a ball. And then the next pitch, he takes a ball low out of the zone. And then on the 1-2 pitch, he's just overmatched by a 101 mile per hour fastball in the bottom of the zone. He didn't have a chance. He looked overmatched. And that has been one of the big issues with Justin Turner in recent years is his struggles against high velocity fastballs. And that's how they're attacking him. And there's a lot of at-bats where he just doesn't look competitive out there. If he's not striking out, you're seeing weak contact, weak fly balls. So yeah, in the postseason, he's really struggled. He struggled this year. He struggled last year before he went out with that hamstring injury. And look, if you look at his season as a whole, he definitely was an above average major league player. I mean, in his age 37 season, in 128 games, he still made 532 plate appearances, slash 278, 350, 438, had a 343 Woba, a 123 weighted runs created plus, meaning his bat was 23% better than league average and finished with 2.4 F4. So definitely was not a bust of a season by any means from Justin Turner. The only question is, do you think he's worth $16 million heading into his age 38 season next year and to me the answer to that is unequivocally no and yes when it comes to the Dodgers it's not about the money look they would have paid Bryce Harper 45 million dollars a season they just didn't want to do it for 10 years you saw the deal they got done with Trevor Bauer they were fine making him paid the highest paid pitcher in the game giving him over 40 million dollars and it was just they don't want to commit the years they're fine with the money so I don't think 16 million dollars is going to hurt the Dodgers in the pocket in fact I know it won't it's not going to hurt them from a financial standpoint but I think when you consider the two million dollar buyout if he wants to be a Dodger I think you bring him back saying hey you're going to be a bench guy you're going to be a DH guy and you're also going to be a mentor and a clubhouse leader and you could sign him to a deal a one year eight or nine million dollar deal because that is what teams are paying for two war seasons eight or nine million dollars and I think too on top of everything is that we're living in this post Dodgers NLDS loss world. We're living in this world where the Dodgers had the worst postseason collapse in their franchise's history. They're the first team that has won 109 or more games that hasn't at the very least made it to the league championship series. So it's not a debate. This is the biggest collapse that any team has experienced in the postseason. And yes, baseball is a crapshoot, but when you consider the resources the Dodgers have, their roster construction, everything they've invested into this team, they have have one World Series to show for it in 10 years. So I think if you're the Dodgers, the way you look at this is Justin Turner, that is your clubhouse leader. That is who I've called the milk to the Dodgers cereal. He has the unofficial C on his chest, but maybe you say to yourself, hey, this just hasn't worked. We have not won enough World Series with Justin Turner as our team captain. Maybe it's time to just start fresh. Maybe it's time to overhaul certain parts of this roster and give guys like, and give some of the young talent and opportunity guys like Miguel Vargas you did sign Max Muncy to an extension but the reality is look you need more productivity out of the middle of your lineup and if you're not going to get hit for power you got to hit for contact and Justin Turner couldn't do both and he hasn't been good in the postseason for quite some time I think he gets by on him having those postseason stats and some of his big moments early on in his career towards his prime but really he hasn't been a big major factor for the Dodgers in the postseason for a while. Just go back and look at the numbers. And while I love Justin Turner, I'm a big fan of his, the Dodgers wouldn't have been able to have the success that they've been able to have without him over the past few seasons. But still, I do think that if you're the Dodgers, the smart move is to not pick up that club option and really send a message that, hey, we're not going to be this franchise's work past due, retirement gift type franchise. We're all about winning here in LA. And I think if Justin Turner wants to return, you bring him back on a cheaper contract. 
contract. And like I said, it's not about the money, but I think it's about the principle. I think it's about the message that you send. And can you really bank on Justin Turner being healthy next season? Can you really bank on him coming through in October? Because at this point for the Dodgers, what exactly are you playing for? You're playing for October. You're playing for the World Series. And at some point, it does get stale. The message, the locker room, the clubhouse. I've been in that clubhouse this season 30 plus times, whatever it was. And I can tell you, first and foremost, it's a very business-like clubhouse. Not a t- too much communication. You do have the club dub. And yes, they do have some fun. But in that clubhouse, the vibe that I got, it was so-so. I mean, it was very business-like. Guys leaving as soon as the game ends, doing their own thing. And I just think that you could use some new life in that Dodgers clubhouse. And I do think that the Dodgers are going to make some significant changes this offseason. And while I wouldn't mind having Justin Turner back, I think I definitely would under the right contract. I do think that we're at a point where you do have to see what some of these young guys have. You do have to explore some of your options because you do need more production from that five hole, from that six hole. And Justin Turner in the postseason just hasn't been doing it. But let me know down below in the comment section. Do you want to see JT back in L.A.? Should they pick up his $16 million club option? But let me know down below in the comment section. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And if you want to see us post even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.